Timmery, and we're here for another episode of Data Talks. I'm here with Brian Balfour, CEO and founder of Reforge. Hey, Brian. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh yeah, thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about Reforge and how did you start it? Yeah, so Reforge started um, really kind of the nugget for the idea came from my time uh, at HubSpot. Mm -hmm. So um, I joined HubSpot as the VP of growth about a year before we went public um, and then through a little time after going public. And uh, uh, we built this amazing team and uh, I would sit in these one-on-ones uh, with different uh, members of my team every single week and they would be asking me to do something around professional development, like um, what they should be doing, other resources, all those types of things. Um, and, uh, and then I would uh, always go and then spend like a few hours of my time trying to find something to recommend them. Uh -huh. And uh, I would just come up empty handed nine times out of 10. And uh, that was frustrating for me as a manager because I felt like a bad manager. That was, of course, frustrating for them as a team member, right? And, of course. Uh, and so, so then the question became, well, why, why is that? Like, why couldn't I find anything? And um, it's, uh, it's just kind of the nature of like how our world has changed. Um, it's uh, our world is moving so fast, and when we think about all these disciplines like product management and data and software development in general. It's really only like 20 years old, yeah. and uh, and they're the modern um, frontier sort of topics is still trapped in the heads of this small group of like what we would call captains, not the generals and CEOs, and not necessarily the individual soldiers on the front line, but the people who are kind of leading the charge on the field, helping solve a lot of these really tough problems in real time. And so um, I put together this. Um, course about my background, uh, which is like pro product-driven growth, uh -huh. and uh, did it on the side, did way better than expected, and then uh, that just one thing led to another, and we, we created Reforge, and so Reforge now today is um, basically a, a set of programs for emerging and existing leaders uh, within technology and software companies, uh, where we partner with um, the top leading practitioners, people that have helped build companies like Atlassian, Google, Facebook, Pinterest, Airbnb, Uber, and uh, we unlock all of that knowledge in their head and package it in a way uh, to um, help um, sort of all these emerging existing leaders kind of level up in their organization. And, and you've talked about the data will of death, can yeah. you? Which sounds super ominous. Can yeah. you talk more about that? <laughs> yeah, so the data, <laughs> the data wheel of death came out of, I don't even remember who the conversation was with, but uh, we were talking about it and uh, I just, like the words blurted out of my mouth of like, um, yeah, like greater than 80% of data projects uh, I, I've seen fail. Wow. And then we started talking a little bit about why. And there's a ton of different reasons why. Course, and we could talk yeah. about all those reasons, but I think the most, uh, the most common one that I've seen is that um, at the root of the problem is that a lot of companies say, okay, like I, I know we need to use data within our organization um, to drive some type of result or better outcome. And, um, and so they're like, all right, we're gonna get serious about data. And um, <laughs> they do this whole project plan around um, implementing um, whatever it might be, analytics or data. And they're like, okay, like we have, we have, we're here today and we're gonna get here. And um, the problem with viewing anything data related as a project is that fundamentally data needs to be seen as a core part of your product development process, right? It's an ongoing thing, right? And so when you don't view it as part of the process, what happens is you do this project and then inevitably you haven't gotten some things right or some things change, right? And, um, and as things change, uh, the data gets like a little bit messy or things aren't right. And so then people stop trusting the data. And then once they stop trusting the data, they stop using the data, right? And it just kind of feeds on itself to the point that um, you probably have some set of uh, analytics dashboards or something just like hiding away that nobody else looks at and it's basically useless and trash, right? And uh, so that's essentially what this data wheel of death is, is that as soon as people start um, uh, losing trust in the data and you're not there to quickly act on it, uh, it incentivizes them to stop using the data. And when they stop using the data, then um, you stop investing resources in it. And when you stop investing resources, right, like it just, it just repeats, it right. just repeats on itself. And uh, so that's where that came from. 
it's such a huge investment to make data part of your process. How do data teams not become a bottleneck while they're, they're building all of this out? So this really depends on, um, this really depends on like the structure of the organization. Mm -hmm. um, Ken Rudin, who was uh, the, uh, I believe the VP of analytics at Facebook for a while, and before that was at Zynga, he's now at Google, um, running one of the growth teams there. Um, I think has some really good insights on this, which is um, I think first and foremost, uh, the the role of the, the the data team is not there to uh, necessarily process questions or requests from end teams. They are there to enable those end teams to um, gain insights and ask questions on on their own. That means Interesting. enabling them with the right set of tools with um, um, educating them on the right set of, of processes, in some ways holding them accountable like to those processes uh, and some of the other factors. So just flipping that from a, uh, a team that is taking orders to those that are enabling all of these end teams to, um, uh, to sort of process on their own is, um, is I think once again the big, men the big mental switch. Um, and do you have advice for companies who are like, you were talking about earlier how companies decide they really want to be more data driven. Like what would you recommend for people who are just getting started with that? To be honest, it, it, the root is what does that actually mean to you? For sure. Right? What, yeah. what, is, what does data driven mean to you? I think people just say it because it sounds great right. and everyone wants to be driven right. by data. But right. yeah, exactly and, what and there's, mean. There's definitely different philosophies on this and, and look, I'm, I'm of the philosophy that there's, there's a place for intuition and great gut level thinking. Mm -hmm. But our intuition and gut is best in places where uh, we have had um, multiple feet cracks at a problem in multiple feedback cycles, right? Um, like think driving, right? Like obviously it becomes intuition over yeah. time because we have so many, um, we have so many different like cracks at the problem and all these different feedback cycles. But the nature of like what I think most listeners to this will be doing is like the nature of their work is that they're constantly solving new problems. Mm -hmm. Things that they necessarily haven't done before. And so I think um, just us thinking that we can just use our gut and intuition for those things. It's just, it's our, it's our faults as human beings, our own egos, like kind of getting in the way, right? Yeah. And uh, and so I'm very much um, more about, you know, there there is a there's a time to use gut intuition, and there's a time to use data. It's not binary. It's typically always sort of a mix it's of these things, for right? Sure. And so I don't know. This is just a little bit about how do you how do you want to view data within your organization? Some people. How do you want to talk about it? Do you want to use the the, the language of like data informed rather than data driven? I know people have like really strong feelings about that, right? Yeah. Um, and um, and so like I would just as a leadership team first really define that of like well when we say data driven, what do we really mean, right? Like let's define <laughs> that. What let's define that for ourselves first, mm -hmm. and then the second is based on that is that um, you need to make sure that the people who uh, you want people using data have the skill sets to uh, actually take productive action once you get them that that data. Yeah. And so that doesn't necessarily mean that they have SQL. It means do they know how to consume data and translate that into a product decision, a sales decision, a marketing decision, something of that nature. That's more about data analysis, analytical thinking, those types of things, um, which you know, unfortunately, just in a lot of our edu like uh, education just wasn't necessarily a core part of all of our educations and so like there's that piece of it and then we can think about then we can think about all of the different things about um, uh, like um, tooling who do we start with um, let's go through a process of defining like our metrics when are we going to come back and check on these metrics so, like to ask like are these still do we still these think these are the right metrics we should be tracking. Yeah. Um, you know, that's 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 about metrics. And then there's a whole other world of data of like, well actually data is a core part of my product, right? These are people that are using data like Stitch Fix for um, personalization or Pinterest or um, anything of that nature. And that's a whole different world as well. Right. Yeah. Each one of these things you're talking about is like we could just like yeah. dive in for like 20, 30 yeah. minutes on each topic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but mo most importantly is like, once again, figure out what data means, 
um, to you, make sure that you're enabling the team with the right set of skill sets. Um, then it comes, uh, then it comes about the tools and always, uh, just like anything, start small, build from there. For sure. You try too big, too much at once, you're kind of, you're just going to get diffusion. It spreads out too thin, and nothing ever kind of takes hold. And what's on the horizon for Reforge? Yeah, so um, I think you know for Reforge, we continue to um, we really just are really focused on identifying what are these like frontier topics that are still trapped in the heads of these practitioners, mm -hmm. and then finding the right people to um, uh, to collaborate with and unlock them and put them together in different programs. So right now we have um, a growth series program, which is really a comprehensive thing for people either working in products or marketing or um, even some of these other functions, but have not, not necessarily done something comprehensive around um, like the growth methodology. We have an advanced growth strategy course for people who have been um, working with growth uh, methodology for a few years. We have some specific things like our retention engagement deep dive, which is just such a core piece to um, building a really successful business is having phenomenal retention engagement. We have a super deep dive on that. Um, and some of the things on the horizon is um, we are going to do uh, a program around data and data strategy and uh, um, um, potentially some other like uh, uh, leadership specific things to a function. Um, so different like product leadership and marketing leadership. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's super exciting. So if people want to get to learn more about Reforge, what uh, should yes. they do? Uh, just go to Reforge.com. You can sign up for our, our notifications list. It'll be very obvious on the site. Um, we run two cohorts per year, spring and fall. Um, they're application only. And uh, and then later this year, we'll be um, launching some, some other versions of the product. But um, go there, sign up. We'll let you know when applications open. And uh, um, we hope you join us. Okay. Thank you so much for taking the time, Brian. Thanks for having great. me.